Beneficial Organisms Beneficial organisms are anthropocentrically defined. Thus, its definition will depend on its importance to humans. We define beneficial organisms as organisms in any form that is useful or valuable to humans. It can either be a plant, an animal, for this course we will be focusing on insects and other arthropods, or they can be microorganisms. There are different types of beneficial organisms according to their roles or uses. The first type is the pollinators. These are organisms that aid the pollination process or the act of transferring the pollen grains from the male anther of a flower to the female stigma. 90% of the pollinators are insects, but it is not restricted to bees and butterflies alone. Ants, flies, strips, bugs, and beetles can also serve as pollinators. Second, they are decomposers or organisms that breaks down organic material. Examples include columbula, maggots, and microorganisms. Decomposers helps improve soil physical condition and increase soil fertility. Third, they serve as food for humans and feed for animals. Fourth, they are sources of important products. Let's take bees for example. The products that we can get from bees includes honey, beeswax, pollen, propolis, bee bread, royal jelly, and bee venom. We also have the silk from silkworms and spiders. Resins from lock bugs, a type of scale insect, the most common species of lock bug producing resin is the Caria laca. But there are other species of lock bug that produces resin. The most common product from lock bug resins is the shellac, which can be used as finish or in nail polish. Ink or the iron gall ink. This came from the Aleppo gulls produced by oaks in response to a chemical substance secreted by a P. galler wasp larvae. The tannin extracted from the Aleppo gulls is combined with iron salts to produce the ink. Dyes from dried body of scale insects. Kermes dye from Kermes elysis feeding on oaks. Polished carmine dye for a pyropora polonica feeding on novel and the cochineal scales Dactylopius coccus feeding on opuntia or the prickly pear cactus. Fifth, the organisms or their products can also be used in medicine. For instance, the maggot therapy where in laboratory reared and disinfected maggots were placed in a non-healing wound to feed on the dead cells and induced healing by the allantoin it releases. Apitherapy or the use of bee or any bee product in medicine, an example is the bee venom therapy which has been used to help relieve pain from rheumatoid arthritis. Cantaridine from blister beetles as medication against molluscum. Chitin, chitosan, and their derivatives are used for wound healing. Other medicinal products include antibiotics, antifungal, antelmintic, and immunosuppressant. Probiotic are also medicinal products from beneficial microorganisms that is incorporated in our foods. Sixth, they serve as model for scientific studies such as the Drosophila melanogaster that is used for genetic studies. And model for robotics, an example is the RoboBees and other insect-inspired robots that has potential use in crop pollination search and rescue missions, surveillance, weather, climate, and environmental monitoring. Seventh, they are biological indicators of the environment. For example, dragonflies are bioindicators of water quality. Female dragonflies lay their eggs in or near fresh waters only, while the genus Polistes, a wasp, is a promising bioindicator of lead pollution. Columbula or springtails is a bioindicator of pollution by heavy metals, pesticides, 
and water acidity. The density of ants serves as bioindicator in degraded and reforested areas, while bees are good bioindicator of trace metals, radioactivity, pesticides, herbicides, and industrial pollutants. Lastly, there are organisms that can be used to control pests called biological control agents.